Wrigley Field on a sizzling hot Friday afternoon. We are set for the Hyundai leadoff man on WGN Sports. One of the great rivalries in all of pro sports continues today as the Cardinals are in for the first of a three-game series. Hi again, everyone. I'm Len Casper. Welcome to the Hyundai leadoff man. Should be a fun weekend. Always fun when these two teams get together. The Cubs are four and three on the homestand. The Cardinals yesterday had one hit in 11 innings as they had their eight game winning streak snapped by the Philadelphia Phillies. More on this matchup coming up. But as we go to break on the Hyundai leadoff man or Hyundai dealer of the game team Hyundai in Highland Indiana. See the cars the experts are raving about. MyHyundaiChicago.com. The Hyundai Leadoff Man, brought to you in part by Walgreens, the pharmacy of the Chicago Cubs, and by your Chicago Hyundai dealers. See the cars the experts are raving about at MyHyundaiChicago.com. Occasion today, the Chicago Cubs cookbook, all star recipes from your favorite players being released, as that'll benefit the Ryan and Jenny Dempster Foundation. All kinds of great recipes from Cubs players, and a couple in there from my mom as well, so make sure you check it out. Let's hear from Ryan Dempster and some of his teammates about this great new cookbook. Uh, I'm a grill guy, so whatever I'm uh, cooking is usually on a grill uh, fish, chicken, steaks, uh, pork chops. I um, actually got a, a great pork chop recipe. I got picked up some co called Louisiana butt rub, and I uh, got it when I was down in Ron Gatry's golf tournament, um, and uh, it's phenomenal. So um, whatever it is, vegetables, corn on the cob, everything on the grill. Yeah, it's awesome, man. It's, uh, you know, uh, very uh, overwhelming to see the work that obviously, you know, Kerry put in on, on doing it all, and Corey Miller and Ted and, and uh, you know, the whole Cubs organization, all the players, and all the way up to the Ricketts, and um, their support's been huge through all of this, and, and uh, doing something like this, it, is uh, so great for the fans and at the same time is going to raise uh, some great money and some great awareness for a great cause. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, you know, we can clown around and uh, put our favorite dishes in some in some, some cookbook and everybody throw it in there together. And uh, I make a real good peanut butter and jelly, toast the bread, uh, go with grape jelly most of the time, but sometimes I'll throw strawberry on there, creamy Jif. Anything we can do to raise money and help uh, – and help others. Obviously, we're going to do it. Yeah, it's re it's really good. I mean, uh, you know, every time uh, we go out on our way, it's you know, out of baseball and, and and do some other stuff. It's kind of fun, you know, and uh, you know, actually inter interacting with the, with the people outside or going to Humboldt Park or doing a recipe thing. I mean, it, it's all good. We all enjoy it. Um, I had a uh, rice and beans, and then I had a uh, Harry Carey's uh, 
like chicken, I, I'll, outstanding. I love it. It's great to be a part of it and, and do something like this. You know, being a rookie, I can't do too much right now, but just to be able to put in a little recipe and help out, it's great. I uh, just have one. It's broccoli and chicken casserole. It's very simple, but it's very good. Well, you know, I was pretty excited to be a part of it and to get something in there. Uh, my fiance has just learned how to cook now, and she's getting pretty good at it. But, you know, that was her first uh, meal she was able to cook right there. I think the cookbook's, uh, you know, it's a great idea, and it's a little insight into some of the, the players' lives. And, and you know, we're, we're no different than anybody else. We go home, we have meals, and, and uh, you know, in the off season, you know, my wife and I love to cook at home. You spend eight months on the road. And so uh, eating at home is a, is a treat. So at home, we, we, in the off-season, we try to do as much as possible. Uh, you know, it's something that uh, we make in the off-season a lot. It's, uh, it's kind of a, a cold-weather food. It's the, the little uh, pork stew. Uh, my wife does a great job, and I think she got the recipe from her mom. And it's just one of those big uh, dinner table meals that everybody kind of bellies up and, and stays there for a while, and all the stories come out, and it's just a, it's a good... Uh, warmer upper on a, on a cold day in the winter time in the off season. Go to triumphbooks.com slash Cubs cookbook if you're interested and a nice job Kerry Muscat from Cubs.com for putting it all together. Time now for Bob's AutoZone tip of the day. Today Bob wants you to look out for others particularly the elderly and those without air conditioning. A very hot day today here in Chicago. The tip of the day brought to you by AutoZone for the auto parts accessories and advice you need. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Brought to you in part by Walgreens, the pharmacy of the Chicago Cubs. And by your Chicago Hyundai dealers. See the cars the experts are raving about at MyHyundaiChicago.com. Ah, good. Hot and spicy on a hot and spicy afternoon here in Wrigleyville. The Cubs again 4-3 and three on this homestand, but still two games under 500 at home. They'd like to change that. And really, they really need to sweep the series if they have any shot in the division right now. 11 back of the first place Cardinals. Now the starting pitchers today. Randy Wells for the Cubs. A 166 in July. But a rough outing for him against the Cardinals back on May 28th. He did not get an out. Jeff Supon. Decent numbers against the Cubs. But two terrible starts against them to start the year with Milwaukee. He looks for his first win of the year. Around the batting cage today, a couple of old friends, Tony La Russa and Lou Pinella chatting. We'll have the Cardinals and Cubs next.
WGN Sports. of the sub-freezing temperatures in December. We bring you a July 23rd sizzling edition of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN Sports. The wind is howling straight out. It is very hot in the sun. And the Cubs welcome in their old rivals, the St. Louis Cardinals, as we welcome Cub fans from all over the country watching on WGN America, America's home for baseball. It'll be a huge offensive day today, along with Bob Brindley, I'm Len Casper. The Cubs offense has been a lot better lately. We know they could not push across the winning run on Wednesday, but Giovanni Soto has been a big offensive force this year. You know, Len, you think about the good games that the Cubs have played recently, and Gio is usually right in the middle of it one way or another, either getting on base to start a rally, driving in runs, or as he's done five times in the last nine games, driving himself in with a home run. He's really hot right now. The Cardinals have basically done it with their pitching staff. They have the best ERA in baseball, but when you think about their offense, you start with two guys. You know, it's like when the Bulls play the Lakers. You have to concede that Kobe's going to get his 30 points. Well, when you play the Cardinals, especially right now, you kind of concede that Pujols and Holiday are going to get theirs. You just try to limit the guys on base ahead of them and limit the damage. It'll be Jeff Supon for the Cardinals, Randy Wells for the Cubs, and let's go down to the field for our national anthem. Kindly remove your caps and join Chicago favorite Wayne Mesmer, accompanied by Gary Pressey at the Lowry organ, as they honor the United States by performing our national anthem.
Wind straight out to center, gusting at 13 miles an hour. Yes, it does feel a little bit like St. Louis. Although we're at Wrigley Field. That doesn't feel like St. Louis. Brought to you by Chrysler. For more info on our vehicle lineup, log on to Chrysler.com or stop by your Chicagoland or Northwest Indiana Chrysler dealer today. Jeff Supon released by Milwaukee and back with the St. Louis Cardinals where he had had the best success of his career. And he's been a little bit better with St. Louis, but still without a win. And Randy Wells probably a uh, Stuck in his craw, as they say, that start against St. Louis in late May. Oh, no question. That had to stick in every bit of his craw, whatever a craw is, but uh, don't ask. Yeah, Wells coming off a real good outing against the Phillies, however, went seven innings of seven hit shutout baseball. Unfortunately, came out of the game trailing one to nothing, what would eventually be a four to one Cubs loss. Cubs with an off day yesterday. Take the field for the first of a three game weekend set to wrap up this 10 game homestand. Now, the St. Louis Cardinals starting lineup they had won eight in a row, but then were held to one hit yesterday in 11 innings and a loss to Philadelphia. It's Felipe Lopez to lead it off. John Jay is in right. Ryan Ludwig may be back off the DL by Sunday. Pujols holiday, we talked about them. Colby Rasmus in center with 16 homers. It's Skip Schumacher at second. Jason LaRue, the catcher. They hit their pitcher eighth on occasion, and today it's Jeff Supon with Tyler Green batting ninth. And let's take a look at how the Cubs take the field defensively behind Randy Wells today. Brought to you by Pepsi. Every Pepsi refreshes the world. Soriano, Bird, and Colvin across the outfield. Ramirez, Castro, Terrio, Lee across the infield. The red hot Giovanni Soto behind the plate once again today for right hander Randy Wells. You know, Len, with the exception of some changes at second base, uh, this has kind of been the everyday lineup for Lou Pinella in the second half of the season. He's going to ride these guys hard. They've had uh, a measure of success in the second half of the season, and apparently Lou feels very comfortable with the offensive performance of these guys. Set the umpires for you. Alfonso Marquez, native of Mexico, now lives in Arizona. Will work the plate. Tim Cheetah's a crew chief, Bob Davidson, and Angel Campos at second and third. And it'll be switch hitting Felipe Lopez against right hander Randy Wells. Uh, Cardinals about middle of the pack in the National League in the run scoring department. Took two of three here in late May, and this is the first of 12 to finish out the season series. The Cubs have not even gone to St. Louis yet. It'll be in mid August, and a called strike on a fastball. Hot day, hot gun, or a hot arm of Randy Wells. 93, that's about as hard as he'll throw. One ball, one strike on Lopez. Talked about the Cardinals' uh, difficulties hitting Cole Hamels last night. Talked to a couple of the coaches on the Cardinals staff. They said it's the best they've ever seen Hamels throw the ball. His velocity last night, consistently in the mid 90s, really stifled this Cardinals offense. The 1 2 on the way, a swing and a miss. Again, 93, a pretty good fastball for the first out. Good location on that four seamer. We've seen Ryan Dempster do this from time to time this season. Of course, Dempster, a pitcher who also relies heavily on a sinker, but every now and then use that four seamer up at the top of the strike zone and got Lopez to swing and miss. Right fielder John Jay takes a strike. Ryan Ludwick on the DL with a strained left calf, but could be back this weekend. First year hitting coach Mark McGuire. And already, Bob, this has been a success compared to his other outing against the Cardinals. He did not get an out. 
And that start on May 28th. 7 1 loss, gave up five runs. That's high. One and two on Jay with Pujols, and then if anybody gets on, Matt Holiday. Just a 16 pitch outing for Randy Wells. And I think Randy Wells learned a valuable lesson that day against the Cardinals. His history in his brief major league career has been as a strike thrower. He's going to try to get ahead in the count. He wants you to put the ball in play very early on in the sequence. And unfortunately, against this Cardinals team last time out, he threw too many very hittable strikes early in the count. A chopper to Ryan Terrio. Easy play. And they get John Jay for out number two. You like to call them quality strikes. Occasionally I'll call them uh, hittable strikes if they're over the plate. That time a good sinker working its way off the outside corner. Got the roll over ground ball to the right side. Now Big Albert. Three homers here on May 30th. And the last time these two teams met. Three-time NL MVP. Not hit very well is Colvin with a long run. He's going to get there. So a one, two, three, top of the first. Good signs for Randy Wells. The Cubs are coming up against veteran Jeff Supon when we come back. Runs per game over their last 10. Brought to you by Pepsi. Every Pepsi refreshes the world. Colvin Castro Lee at the top. Big numbers for Derek against Jeff Supon. Ramirez, Bird, Soriano in the middle. We highlighted Giovanni Soto in our open. Ryan Terrio hitting eighth, and the pitcher Wells ninth. Let's take a look at the Cardinals defensively. We've got Holiday, Rasmus, and Jay across the outfield. Felipe Lopez at third base, his 32nd start of the season at third base. He's been a nice pickup for the Cardinals, has also played some shortstop and second base. Today at short, we have Tyler Green at second, Skip Schumacher, Big Albert Pujols over at first base. Jason LaRue doing the catching for veteran right hander Jeff Supon. See his numbers on the season. Supon will feature a four pitch mix, fast curve, slider change, and usually mixes it up pretty well, and he needs to to be effective. 35 years old, 6'2, 230. Did not end well for him in Milwaukee. He signed with the Cardinals on June 14th after being released by the Brewers. Two balls, no strikes. His first two starts this year after beginning on the DL with cervical disc pain. Both were against the Cubs, and neither went well for Supon. And Tyler Colvin with a leadoff homer. Turned on a 2-0 offering and deposited it into the bleachers in right. Get it up in the air today.
especially if you get it up in the air with a little bit of authority as Tyler Colvin does right here. The 2-0 fastball out over the plate allowing him to extend his arms. Hook that ball back to right field. That is a chance for a lot of no doubt home runs today. Especially if Supon leaves that fastball up over the plate the way he did to Tyler Colvin. First career leadoff home run for Tyler Colvin who's only been leading off for a few days. Well once again Len statistics and numbers tell you only so much but uh, the Cardinals this season are 38 and 9 when they score first in a ball game. That's number one in the major so. That tells you what's happened in the past but. Good omen that the Cubs score first today. Here comes a 1 1 to Starlin Castro. Good rip, fouled it back for Colvin. Now, sole possession of the home run lead among all rookies with 14. In those two starts, a total of nine and a third innings pitch, 16 base hits, and 10 runs allowed. A 1 2 pitch. And a nice play on the short hop by Lopez. And he's safe. Castro just beat the throw. So the two rookies making some noise here in the bottom of the first. Coleman with a homer. Castro with an infield hit. He earned this one. That's just a routine chopper to the third base side. Lopez took his sweet time collecting himself and throwing across the diamond. And Castro legs it out for an infield hit. That's part of the reason Lou likes the two young guys at the top of the order. Both have good speed and both have a lot of energy at the top of that lineup. Sets it up for Derek Lee. Castro on. Nobody out. Outside corner. Interesting, Bob. This uh, hot streak here recently is hitting 419 on the homestand. Has coincided with a lot of big previous numbers against opposing starters. Seems like just about everybody the Cubs have faced here lately. You go right to Derek Lee and go, "Wow, <laughs> look at those look, numbers." Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. 0 and 2. That's one of those things, Len, that occasionally can be very hard to figure out. I mean, is it just a, a fact that you have some success and you have more confidence facing that opposing pitcher? Does the pitcher have a bad scouting report on a particular hitter? But for whatever reason, Derek Lee has worn out Jeff Supon in his career. Cardinals beginning the weekend, a game and a half up. Uh, the Cincinnati Reds dropped their last two games. Cards have won eight of nine. Yesterday was their first loss of the second half. Ground ball, this should be two. They get one, and there's two. Five, four, three, two down. Ramirez. Cooled off a bit on Wednesday, one for five with a walk, but still with nine homers and 24 knocked in over his last 13 games. And he takes it high ball one. I mentioned this on our uh, WGN baseball blog, WGNTV.com. You don't play these games on paper, and you kind of alluded to the numbers earlier, but the way the Cardinal rotation worked out, it could benefit the Cubs this weekend. Their top three guys are as good as anybody in baseball Adam Wainwright, Chris Carpenter, left hander Jaime Garcia. And the Cubs will not have to face Wainwright or Garcia. They will see Carpenter Sunday night, but the Cubs will have Ryan Dempster on the mound. And with all these games left against St. Louis, you know you're going to get a healthy dose of Wainwright later, so you might as well take advantage of it this weekend. Absolutely. Those three guys you mentioned 
Wayne Wright, Carpenter, and Garcia have combined for 47 of the Cardinals' 60 quality starts this year. Ball four. Ramirez is on. That'll bring up Marlon Bird. Blake Hawksworth, the right-hander, will pitch. Dave Duncan and Tony Larusa tomorrow. Marlon stayed hot coming out of the break. He's reached base in 15 of his 32 plate appearances on this homestand. And he takes it low, ball one. Well, this kind of day, Len, the longer you can make that defense stay on the field, standing out there under the bright sunshine, yeah, the better it's going to work to your advantage late in a ball game. Stifling conditions here today. Looks like the wind is just increasing as it blows straight out to center. And as I say that, it dies down. So Supon has now missed on seven straight. And an indication on that 2 0 pitch uh, of what Supon's going to try to do the Cubs hitters today. He threw a changeup, straight changeup on a 2 0 count. He's not the kind of pitcher that can throw fastballs in predictable fastball counts. A 3 0, ball four. Can't find the strike zone all of a sudden. Talked with uh, former Cub Scott Sanderson the other day about pitching on days like this. And his point was you're going to give up runs today. All you're trying to do is win the game. If you're on that mound. Just give the team a chance to win. Try to limit the damage. Understand that you're probably going to give up some hits. You may give up a cheap home run or two, but keep it close. And no pun intended, but the cardinal sin on a day like this is walking guys. And Soriano takes ball one. Nine bad ones in a row from Jeff Supon. Worked a lot with Jason LaRue since he was signing with St. Louis. Ten straight balls. A little reaction that time from Supon. That was actually a borderline pitch. Could have been called a strike very easily, but when you missed on nine straight pitches, the umpire's not likely to give you that borderline strike. Some issues here between LaRue and Supon with the runner at second base, Aramis Ramirez peering in at the signs. They just can't seem to get on the same page. The kick and the 2 0. He got jammed and he did him a favor. And Soriano pops out to Lopez after 10 straight balls. Supon gets out of it. But the leadoff homer by Colvin gives the Cubs the early lead.
Lead one nothing. As we get into the second, Matt Holiday will start it. And he takes a strike. He had the Cardinals only hit yesterday. That's tough to do one hit in 11 innings. Owen oh two on their cleanup man with Rasmus on deck. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Actually, Powell tipped it. Today's Walgreens celebrity bad kids Delaney Davis from Napanee, Indiana. Zach Ludwig from Rock Island, Illinois. Getting autographs from Cubs Vice President General Manager Jim Hendry. For more info on how you can be a Walgreens celebrity bat kid, go to WGNRadio.com. Walgreens, the pharmacy of the Chicago Cubs. Good tail on that two-seam fastball. He's missing some bats. As Rasmus down in the count 0-1. Open stance from the Cardinals center fielder. A bit of a leg kick as he took it for ball one, one and one. Now Rasmus has been struggling lately. He's only two for his last 21 with seven strikeouts. He's been known to chase that high fastball, especially in on his hands. That's the one uh, Randy just gave him. He has hit better on the road than at home. 336 away from Bush Stadium, second best road average in the league. And now three and one. And you want to be in the lineup on a day like this. I want to be in the lineup every day, but I'm never in it. Ooh, that's what I saw earlier. <laughs> yeah. You want to be up when the wind's doing that. Still three and two. Now, when National League hitters go to sleep at night and dream about playing ball at Wrigley Field, these are the conditions that they dream about. Wind howling straight out. Ball just jumping all over the ballpark. Randy Wells almost didn't pitch today. If the Cubs had tied that game in the 12th the other day against Houston, struck out Rasmus. Wells would have pitched the 13th. He threw a few warm up tosses. Tomorrow, the Cubs host these very same Cardinals right here at Wrigley Field. Game time is 12.05, but be sure to arrive early. The first 10,000 fans will receive a Cubs car flag, compliments of Jewel. I always like that when you go home with more than you came with. That car flag out the window celebrating a Cubs victory. Skip Schumacher. Used to seeing him at uh, 300 plus. Right now, just at 252. Pass Ramirez, but backhanded by Castro and save. As Schumacher went head first into first, something I know you don't suggest guys do. But he did beat the throw for an infield single. And really the only time to slide into first base is to avoid a possible tag. There is no way you get to that bag quicker by sliding head first, especially on a fairly routine play. Number two, it gives the umpire a much tougher call over there at first base. And number three, uh, you're very susceptible to injury. You can see Schumacher, his hand kind of banged off and over the top of the base. Fortunately, he didn't jam a finger. But it looks good. Catcher Jason LaRue has been matched up with uh, Supon. This is the sixth time they have worked together. Normally you'd see Yadier Molina behind the plate. Foul pop out of play. The pitcher is on deck in the eighth spot. That's Supon.
Tony started a trend. We've seen some other teams experiment with this concept. He hasn't done it exclusively all season, but has since late June. The pitcher hitting eighth. He's been around for a while, starting with the White Sox. I don't think there's any question he'll end up in the Hall of Fame. Inside. 2 2 the count. Tony and Lou go way back. Played a lot during the summer together in the Tampa area. Pony League, American Legion ball. And they've managed against each other a lot in their careers. Lose Reds beat Tony's A's in the 1990 World Series. Randy Wells, strong start, just the lead out of the uh, infield hit, but no runs. One nothing Cubs early. From Menards, we've been talking about Giovanni Soto and how hot he's been lately. Last nine games, five homers and 11 runs driven in, as opposed to his previous 44 when he hit only four homers and drove in 14. For all your home improvement needs, shop and save big money at Menards. The 08 Rookie of the Year digging in against veteran righty Jeff Supon. Soto hitting seventh today. He takes ball one. Two things will happen today for Jeff Supa. Either all of a sudden he's going to find it, or if he continues to pitch the way he has early, I don't think he has a chance. And he just keeps getting behind everybody, and on a day like this, that's murder. And some pitchers can pitch from behind for a, a little bit. Jeff Supon, as I mentioned earlier, doesn't have the kind of stuff where he can consistently be throwing the ball over the plate two and zero oh and three and one, and expect to come away with any kind of success. Soto grounds out to Schumacher. Cup fans, the Pepsi Refresh Project is providing millions in grants to help communities around the country. The Cubs are competing with other MLB teams for a two hundred thousand dollar Pepsi Refresh grant. Their idea is to support the Humboldt Park Children's Baseball Leagues, allowing hundreds of kids to play baseball at no cost to their families. Vote now at MLB.com slash Pepsi Refresh or text Cubs to 76462. The team with the most votes by August 17th wins the $200,000 grant for their idea. 
Now again, I'm not saying he can't get it back, but I think he would be the first to tell you he could get deep inside his brain right now. I've got to get a lot better. Really, the key for Supon, uh, regardless of which team he's pitching for or what lineup he's facing, is his ability to hit his spots. Keep the sinker down, keep it out of the middle of the plate, and mix in enough off speed pitches to keep hitters off balance. It's no secret that's uh, been Jeff Supon's MO throughout his career, and when he's been good, he's been able to do that. When he's been bad, he's made a lot of mistakes over the heart of the plate. Now, on the flip side, Anything's possible with Randy Wells, but I think his stuff is better than normal early on. And he is hitting his spots. Doesn't mean the Cubs are going to win 12 to 1. I mean, hopefully that's the case, but just, that's kind of the feel we get here early on. Three and two. Yeah. And driven out of the center, Terry aboard, so the pitcher Wells will try to get him in scoring position for Colvin. Good at bat for Ryan Terrio. Took the 3 1 strike to run the count to full, knowing full well that he's probably going to get another sinking fastball from Supon on the 3 2 count. This time he's ready for it and lines it right back up the middle of the field. That's hits now at four consecutive at bats for Ryan going back to that long game on Wednesday against the Astros. Wells with five sacrifices on the year already squaring as Supon throws to first. There's the bunt. Pujols will pick it up. And the only play is at first. Schumacher cover. Cup fans, make sure you check out our WGN baseball blog on WGNTV.com. I have a post about this weekend series and the pitching matchups. We will uh, get info and sound from the Cubs on the new cookbook. We uh, heard some on the leadoff man. Be up for viewing and downloading soon. And go to Chicago Baseball Stories for the anniversary story of Wrigley's first TV appearance in Europe back in 1962. Inside to Colvin. Took Supon up and out for a leadoff homer in the first. Tight and behind just about every hitter. The only guy he's gotten ahead of was Derek Lee, 0 and 2, and he got him to hit into a 5-4-3 double play. Three and nothing. First base open, Castro on deck. It's possible Supon could be pitching around Colvin, but honestly, it looks like a lot of the other at bats we've seen. And once again, a 2 and 0 change up to a Cubs hitter. So I do that to Aramis Ramirez. Does it here to Tyler Colvin? He's now faced 10 batters and has only hit the strike zone twice on the first pitch. Ball four. Season, Cubs need to cash in some of these opportunities, especially early in the ball game. It's uh, been a fault of this Cubs team to allow opposing teams just to hang around and stay close. Supon struggling, but the Cardinals do have the top ERA as a staff in the majors, 3.26. All kinds of reports that 
The Cardinals are interested in Roy Oswalt and that he is interested in them. Down ball to third and Lopez will step on the bag to help Supon get out of the second. Cubs have stranded four through two and lead one nothing. Check out the crowd through the first inning fan cam and see who's enjoying the game. Jeff Supon with a leadoff single. And he starts the third. A little more modern English. It's okay. It's okay. We could have gone with Melt with you. Your big hit from the 80s. <laughs> this hot day. As always, Van Cam is uh, brought to you by Budweiser. It's what we do. And since we're talking Budweiser, Lynn, let's take time today to send out best wishes and good luck to our great friend Jeff Schmidt, who's leaving the Anheuser Busch team today. Smitty has been a huge help to all of us here uh, with Cubs baseball in so many areas and more importantly he's just a great man and a great fan. Schmidt, you're the best and we're going to miss you. Thanks for everything. Yep absolutely. A huge partner and the driving force behind our annual Lennonbaugh bash for charity. O2 to Green, the number nine hitter. How about that? The Cubs work it out so they face Supon to start this inning, and he promptly hits a single. Which may work out to the Cubs' advantage. In the long run, we talked about trying to get your team back in the dugout in front of the fan, maybe up in the clubhouse in the air conditioning, and now Jeff Supon's going to have to run the bases this inning. Derek playing behind Supon at first. And Wells ready for a 2 2 up in the air to center. And the wind pushing it out toward the warning track, but Marlon Bird gets behind it. Even with the pitcher at first, Marlon Bird still does it. Textbook. Never takes anything for granted out there. We are email accessible, LennonBob at Tribune.com. You can follow us at Twitter.com slash LennonBob as well. You know, and some may ask, well, you know, why did Marlon? Why would you do that? I mean, Jeff Supon's not going to tag and go from first to second, but it's it's habit forming. 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, that's what you want to do if there were a fast runner at first base that may tag up and try to advance. You're going to get behind the ball, make a quick catch, get the throw back in the infield as fast as possible. So you use it as a practice for maybe later in the game when you're going to have to hurry a throw back to the infield. Pretty good bargain. Felipe Lopez costing the Cardinals just a million bucks. Here in 2010. And he kind of fits the mold of players that Tony La Russa likes. Guys that can play multiple positions. He's a switch hitter. Runs a little better than average. And we know how Tony likes to use that roster and mix and match with his players off the bench as he makes pitching changes late in the ball game. And Lopez is a guy that can play all over the field. It's interesting. He uh, became a free agent in November, uh, was with Milwaukee, and did not sign with the Cardinals until March 1st. So he was available to anybody who wanted him. I think he went. Yep, he did. Coming to Angel Compost for strike three. A great location for that straight changeup. I talked earlier specifically about the game against the Cardinals earlier this year when Randy Wells got beaten up and he was just throwing a lot of strikes right down the heart of the plate, middle of the thighs, and the Cardinals made him pay. Speculated at that point that maybe it was time for Randy to make an adjustment to the hitters in the National League and try to lead him out of the strike zone from time to time, intentionally throw some pitches out of the strike zone from time to time, just so those opposing hitters. Didn't go up there licking their chops ready to hack at those first couple pitches. 25 year old John Jay, second rounder in 06, out of the University of Miami. The 2 0 just missed the outside corner. Three and nothing. Gotta go right after him here. Or two holes on deck. Randy thought that was a strike. Ball four. Mm. And the mm. says it all. <laughs> Just. We don't know a lot about John Jay. Haven't seen a lot of him. I'm sure that he'll have a great major league career. But uh, if you'd rather face Albert Pujols with two runners on base or leading off the next inning, there is no doubt about what you would prefer. You've used the term hitterish in the past, just talking about a guy who's just feeling it. And I got to be honest, in all the years we've watched Albert Pujols, I've never seen him not. Look hitterish, even when he technically isn't, if you know what I mean. Well, and technically, right now, he is not hitterish. He's only five for his last 25. Right on the very back line of that right handed batter's box. Ball strike. Body English in that right handed batter's box trying to convince home plate umpire Alfonso Marquez that that pitch was inside and low, but it broke right over the plate. Outside one and one. 388 career home runs. Most ever by a player in his first 10 seasons. 43 of them have been against the Cubs, including 23 at Wrigley. High in the air. Terrio looking for some help. He'll get it from Colvin. So they get Pujols for the second time. And just like the song says, it's okay.
Illinois Lottery Mega Millions. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $16 million. Leonard Bob on our WGN Sports Crew. A very hot day here in July. And the Cubs lead the Cardinals 1 0. What a great rivalry this is. Started way back in 1892. Cubs are 59 games over 500 against the Cardinals here at Wrigley Field. Oh, the hole and through is a diving. Felipe Lopez couldn't get it. And time to check out who's moving forward with Toyota. RBI man Aramis Ramirez. Slow start to the season, but since July 6th, he leads everybody by a wide margin. Look at Holiday on that list. Buster Posey of the Giants with 19. Toyota and your local Toyota dealers official partner of the Chicago Cubs. Strike on Aramis. <laughs> Lopez let it go, and they'll get one. Smart play by the third baseman. Took a little peek back at Tyler Green, knew that the shortstop was there. Otherwise, that could have deflected off his glove for a hit. You know, we talk all the time about base runners checking to see where the defenders are playing. Well, if you're the third or first baseman playing in front of that middle infielder, it helps to know where they're at as well. That way, defensively, you'll know if you need to make a play on a ball going to your left, or can I let it go and allow the shortstop to make an easier play? And that time, Lopez let it go through for Green, who was only able to get the force at second. So Ramirez now at first after the fielder's choice and Marlon Bird bounces a foul to third base coach Mike Quaddy, Chicago area native, flips it into the seats. I congratulate Lori Precht on her retirement today. Hopefully enjoying the Cubs and Cardinals. Chance for two, but it dropped. They get one. That's it. That should have been two. And with their double play back in the first inning of this game, the Cardinals now have 107 double plays on the season. Tied with Colorado Rockies for number one in the National League. It's kind of a funny stat too, Lynn, because usually the team that leads the majors in double plays has the worst pitching staff because they have a lot of double play opportunities, a lot of runners on base. Yeah, that is one of those stats that can be deceiving, kind of like left on base. Although in the case of the Cubs on Wednesday, that was not deceiving. No. 16 left on. And one of the most frustrating offensive days of the season. They were two for 14 with men in scoring position. Multiple chances to win the game, and they didn't even need a hit. Well, the left side of the infield's been very busy today. Lopez and Green. Three straight fielders' choices to end the Cubs' third.
baseball on WGN, your official summer baseball station. Holiday Rasmussen Schumacher against Randy Wells. Cubs leading on a Tyler Colvin leadoff homer in the first. And Holiday finally got to play a little left field in the All Star game. Four time All Star. Normally he plays right. In the All Star game, but has not played that position yet in the majors. That happens on occasion. Certain guys play out of position in the Midsummer Classic. One and one. Well, there are some that say Holiday's out of position in left field. He's had some uh, defensive issues from time to time out there, but more than makes up for his defensive liability with that bat. One for one with a run off the bench for the NL and a 3 1 win over the American League. They got jammed and finds the hole on the left side as he broke his bat. Hey, Cup fans, come to Stub Up Day at Wrigley Field this Sunday. Watch the Cubs battle the Cardinals at 7.05. Be the first 20,000 fans, and they'll receive a Cubs t shirt. Compliments of Stub Hub, official fan to fan ticket marketplace of Cubs.com. Marlon Bird can play all three outfield spots, but it was odd to see him in right since he's been exclusively the Cubs center fielder. And he made the defensive play of the game in the ninth inning. Line and caught by Lee, and Matt Holiday took off before knowing it was going to get past the Cubs' Gold Glover. That's an easy double play. We're talk about a fundamental base running mistake. Freeze on a line drive. You're told that in Little League. That time, Holiday knew exactly where Derek Lee was. Bounced off the bag. Ball hit right to him. An easy double play. With two outs, it skips Schumacher. Strike one. Hope you get a chance to pick up your Chicago Cubs cookbook, all star recipes from your favorite players. And the proceeds will benefit the Ryan and Jenny Dempster Foundation. They had a wonderful inaugural casino and concert night at the House of Blues on a Wednesday night. The foundation. Focuses especially on the George Syndrome programs that provide education, physical therapy, and activity to promote long term well being. I know I'm anxious to try Pat Hughes' grilled asparagus with garlic recipe. That sounds delicious. If you turn to page 119, check that 118. That's hiding from us. <laughs> monitor. For dessert, you can have my mom's apple crisp. Mm. I suggested mm. asparagus and apple crisp. Yeah, <laughs> one nothing cups.
Chicago Cubs baseball season on WGN is brought to you by Bud Light Lime. The drinkability of Bud Light with the refreshing taste of lime. Still only one run. Tyler Colvin's homer in the first inning. That's been it. Jeff Supon with a much better third inning. Gave up a leadoff single, but then got three straight ground outs on fielder's choices. And Soto lifts high and deep left center. This baby will go. Middle of the bleachers. Two to nothing. Number 14 for Gio. About Gio in the open of the show. It seems like he's right in the middle of everything the Cubs have done offensively lately. 14th home run of the season, his sixth in his last 10 ball games. A sinker that didn't sink enough on the inside third of the plate and down a little bit right where Giovanni Soto likes it. Strike to Terrio. Soto stays hot. Mr. Saint, is that what it looked like or felt like? Outside corner again. Back to back breaking balls 0 and 2. Looks like Supart's going to plan B here against Ryan Terrio. He hasn't thrown very many breaking pitches in this game, mostly sinkers, cutters, and change ups. Back to back curveballs to start the sequence to Terry. Sinker just off the outside corner. I mentioned this earlier, Jeff Supon's best success as a major leaguer came. His first time around with St. Louis. Top three win totals on 05, 04, 05, and 06. And pitching for the cards in the World Series in 06. And Brad Penny and Kyle Loesch on the DL. I mentioned their reported interest in Roy Oswald. Major League debut with Boston way back in 1995. And he was just 20 years old. Saw a pop up caught by Pujols. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Giovanni Soto homering for the third consecutive game for the first time in his career as sets ticketed in the left. And D. Wells one for one with a sack bunt. Anticipating a potentially a, a short outing from Supon today. His last start was the only time as a starter this year he had completed six innings. They had the long 11 inning game yesterday, and they recalled right hander PJ Walters from AAA Memphis and sent out outfielder Alan Craig. Cubs also made a move. Brian Schlitter's back off the DL. Jeff Stevens to Iowa. We talked about Supon struggles this year. However, uh, his best outing of the year last time out against the Dodgers. Only five hits and a run in six innings of work. A 
There's a big right hander Brian Schlitter who had a right shoulder impingement. And had been on the DL since July 7th. So he's back. And then Jeff Stevens is back at Iowa. Fly ball to left. Matt Holiday still back, middle of the track. He'll get it. Two down. We will record a brand new podcast after the game, so make sure you check that out coming up on WGNTV.com. Castro with two outs, one on. Starlin going with the Humberto Quintero look with the back pocket hanging out. Say one and a half yeah. pockets. Used to mind an old joke about the one eared elephant, but uh, it's a family show. We won't go there. <laughs> I don't know that one. I don't know if I want to. I'll tell you after the end. Okay. Exam. Just trying to cool off a little bit. That's one extra layer of material he's getting away from his body there. It is sticky here at Wrigley Field today. <laughs> Which makes it all the more puzzling that Jeff Supon is wearing long sleeves out there on the mound. How about that? I know they have these new space age undershirts, and that appears to be one of them that wicks the moisture away from your body and supposedly keeps you cooler, but I kind of doubt it on a day like today. Is that the equivalent of an offensive lineman not wearing sleeves in mid December when it's 12 below? Yeah, that's the other side of the coin. Back in the day when they wore the old flannel unis on a day like this. Oh my. Three and two on Castro. So with a couple of leadoff homers, Colvin in the first, Soto in the fourth. Cubs fan just simply waving in hot air. Feel like you have to do something, even yes. if it doesn't do any good. Wells goes on the three-two with two outs, and he'll have to head back after a foul ball. Wonder the energy she is exerting, waving the fan. Is that creating more heat than the actual fan is creating? Cool. Yeah, I would tend to think so. Your neighbor to fan. Bouncer to the shortstop, and Green gets rid of it a lot more quickly than he did the first time around to get Castro. Soto with a homer, two zip cards.
Hey, we go back to July 23rd, 1991. Andre Dawson who goes into the Hall of Fame on Sunday. Called out on strikes by Joe West, and Hawk didn't like it. A little bump. And he wasn't done. Here, Joe, have some bats. Big firewood for later in the offseason. Well, there's more to come. And then in the following inning, Doug Desenzo with a successful squeeze butt. Watch Rob Dibble. <laughs> you can't just throw it at the guy to get him. The Dibble got tossed, and Sweet Lou Pinella wants an explanation. Find out more of what's possible at att.com. AT&T rethink possible. You know, Len, the thing you could not see on that replay is after Dibble picked up the Doug Desenzo squeeze butt. He ran about five or six steps to get into the baseline to make sure he didn't miss Doug Desenzo running down the first baseline. And we want to let our AT&T U-verse viewers in Chicago know that during today's game, if you go to channel 780, you can see a special multi-view presentation that shows you all of our different live camera angles here at Wrigley Field. Pretty cool. So if you want to direct the game along with Skip Ellison, give it a look. AT&T U-verse channel 780. Two and one on Jason LaRue. Fouled off to the right. I mentioned it Wednesday, Bob, that Lou said the day after he announced his uh, pending retirement that he'd like the focus to stay on the team, the games. And all that, and the last two media sessions with him. All the media wants to talk about is him. And that's not going to change wherever we go the rest of the season. The rule with a leadoff hit, that's three straight innings. With the leadoff man reaching. It's time for the fifth inning brought to you by Subway. Hey, Chicago Land viewers, how'd you like to win five $5 footlongs from Subway? Just be the 500th texter to text Subway to 97999. Go to WGNTV.com for complete information and rules. Supan already looking to bunt. Gets it down fair, fair, foul. The questions to Lou today. And it's one of the last times you'll manage against Tony LaRusso. He said, Not the last time. We still have a few more here. Well, one of the last times. So you can see where the line of questioning is pretty much going to go the rest of the way. I spent a long time chatting around the batting caves. Tony La Russa, manager that's a potential free agent at the end of the season. He's operated under a series of one year contracts and uh, doesn't want to negotiate a new contract during the season, doesn't want it to be a distraction to what they're trying to do. So, uh, an interesting situation with a lot of managers around baseball this year. It seems like he's had one foot out the door for a long time and always uh, ends up returning. Get far enough back in that corner of the visitors' dugout here at Wrigley, you can hide yourself from the third base dugout. And if Tony backs up a half a step, uh, he'll be out of view of the Cubs' dugout, and his third base coach Jose Kendall will have a great view of him. Supon strikes out. Stab at it before trying to pull the bat back, but didn't fool Alfonso Marquez behind the plate. Now Tyler Green, the Cardinals have not gotten a ton of production out of the middle of their infield. Brendan Ryan, shortstop hitting 186. Mitchell Schumacher, he's hit a light 252. Starting third baseman David Freeze is on the disabled list. The 
right ankle injury and then he broke the big toe on his left foot. Recently while on the DL. Hey, the guy's been pretty good for him, Bob, in the 30 games, 49 at bats. Aaron Miles hitting 327. Aaron had a, a dismal one year stay here in Chicago. Mentioned some injuries he battled as a Cub. And he's back with St. Louis and was pitched in off the bench. A lot of reasons for uh, his lack of success here in Chicago. Most importantly, the, the amount of injuries that he had it seemed like every time he was getting into some kind of baseball shape and starting to look better at the plate, uh, something else would happen to put him back on that disabled list. One, one change up, nasty. One and two. That slowly, really, the only chance you have to turn to is if the ball is hit to the shortstop's left, leading him toward the bag at second base. And possibly the Cubs would have been able to turn it, but when Castro has to hold his ground, wait for that ball to get there, Green able to leg it out for a fielder's choice. Now Lopez, who has struck out both times. And takes a strike. Mentioned it many times, Randy Wells from Belleville, Illinois, not too far from St. Louis. Now pitching to the team Cardinal fans loathe the most, the Northsiders. Trying to get his first career win against St. Louis. Runner goes from first, called strike, Soto's throw is late. Tyler Green with the steal. Second attempt, second stolen base for Tyler Green. Got a great jump on Randy Wells and compounded by the high throw from Giovanni Soto. No chance to get the Cardinal shortstop. Meanwhile, 0 and 2 on Lopez. The kick and the pitch inside. Lopez was 3 for 5 against Wells going into today, but again, 0 for 2 with two punch outs. And he struck him out again. Lopez still can't figure out Wells this afternoon, and neither can his teammates. Two zip cards.
Hayes, you want to be in the shade if you're working camera. Bob Albrecht in the shade is still hot. Greg Silas, ah, he's down on the field. Baking in the sun, Mike Gentile. Over on the other side. Nicely done, guys. Yeah, best in the business uh, under any circumstances. Especially on a day like today. We appreciate your efforts. Call strike fastball at 86. Tommy Skinner. <laughs> Mike Clay out in the shack. Don't turn around, Mike, whatever you do. <laughs> Griffiths is in the truck today. Hmm. Normally out and about in the sun or with us in the booth, but he's in the air conditioned production truck. That's a veteran who this is. John Jay battling the sun as he retires D. Lee. Joe Paws back up with us behind all the monitors. Get out of the shot, Bob. <laughs> Pride of Marquette University right there. Is that a good advertisement for Marquette or not? I think it is. <laughs> and Aramis felt Supon was taking too long. Walk in a fielder's choice for the Cubs third baseman. Got jammed. He muscles it out in the center for a base hit. It's a group hit for Ramirez, and those fall when you're in a good stretch. Well, they also fall when you're a power hitter that's been swinging the bat well lately. The outfielders are naturally going to play deep for Aramis Ramirez, respecting his power. And on those occasions when he gets jammed or hits a ball off the end of the bat, it's more likely to drop in front of an outfielder who's playing deep. Join the view from the front row on the upper deck. I think that's one of the best seats in the house. I agree. We're in the front row on the upper upper deck, so to speak, in the press box. But you get a look at uh, the neighborhood. Great view of the field. See a little sliver of the lake. And you're probably closer to the playing field in the front row of the upper deck than any ballpark in the country uh, in the upper deck. Does it feel like you're sitting in the upper reaches? And there's still time to get great seats, including bleachers or front row seats in the upper deck for Cubs games this summer. To purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com, call 1 800 the Cubs, or visit the Wrigley Field box office. Two and one to Bird. Boy, a lot more off-speed pitches this time through the lineup from Jeff Supon. We saw him go to that curveball a little bit more in the fourth inning. Doing some change-ups here this inning, mixing in the big slow curve, spotting his fastball sporadically. We saw Marlin uh, having some issue with his glasses. He does not have a strap around the back of his head to keep the shades on. Ball to third. Lopez Schumacher double clutch. It cost him. So the Cardinals have had a couple of shots at uh, double plays. It turned one, but really could have three. It's one of those plays we were just talking about the other night, Lynn. Uh, you're not allowed to assume a double play, but this is a tailor made double play ball, hard hit ball right to the third baseman, and plenty of time to get the force at second. In my own humble opinion, that should be an error. But either way, Marlon Bird reaches base and gives Alfonso Osoriano an opportunity here with two outs in the end.
and it goes without saying a guy like Jeff Supon he, he needs his defense to be very sharp behind him a lot of ground balls to the left side. Tell you what he has battled and kept his team in it. And it appeared he didn't have a whole lot in the first inning. Well, I think if you ask the Cardinals brass that's probably all they really asked of him when they signed him. Just give us a chance. Right now with Supon following Adam Wainwright in the Cardinals rotation you figure that Wainwright's going to give you the deep outing you're looking for and therefore you should have a rested and ready bullpen to go on those days. A line shot for Soriano gone a two run homer. So that missed double play cost Supon two runs. A rope hit into the bleachers. It didn't look like that ball was going to be high enough to get out of the ballpark when it came off of Soriano's bat. That's a pitch down and out over the plate. Soriano, such a good low ball hitter. Absolutely smoked it into the front row out there in left field. Just to the left center field side of the well out there. Eighteenth homer of the year for Alfonso. I was watching Schumacher as that ball came off the bat of Alfonso Soriano and when he saw it land up there in the front row he just went down hands on knees was looking down at the ground and kicked the dirt. Ground ball charged by Lopez. And the inning is over Soriano two out two run homer. And the Cubs lead four nothing after five. Family reunions and bachelor or bachelorette parties. Individual and group tickets are available for all games. For more details, go to WrigleyvilleRooftops.com or call 773-248-ROOF. Alfonso Soriano for the two-run homer. The Cubs lead 4-0. Randy Wells has been excellent. 
Good to see Soriano with that two run home run for a lot of reasons, uh, especially the fact that he has not done well against Jeff Supon in the past. It was only nine for 48 against the Cardinals right hander before that line drive home run to left field. And the Cubs are over two with runners in scoring position, but that doesn't matter. They're just hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Which you really need to do on a day like this. When you're in the batter's box on a day like this, you're in scoring position. Ramirez, John Jay with a leadoff hit. They continue to get the leadoff man on four consecutive innings. But only one time did they get that guy past first base. Time now to look at our PNC Cubs achiever. And in this case, it's an overall National League achiever. Albert Pujols, a three time NL MVP. Barry Bonds, a leader of seven. PNC Bank, proud to be an official sponsor of the Chicago Cubs and just as proud to support the fans and community who cheer them on. PNC for the achiever in us all. Mike Schmidt, longtime Cubs nemesis. Three MVPs. Almost hit him. Wrong with that? Notorious first ball strike hitter. Tailing fastball up and in, below the shoulders. Two and zero. Oh. You don't want to mess around up there very often, though, especially if the ball's out over the plate. That's uh, already elevated for a hitter like Albert Pujols. And I also think in this spot, up four nothing, you don't want to be overly cautious. With Matt Holiday on deck, you would like to avoid that big inning if possible. Well, barely got the outside corner. Albert said no, but Alfonso Marquez has a final say. I think back to the games that the Cubs have had success and kept Pujols not only in the ballpark but off the bases and it seems like usually they work him low and away low and away low and away which is a good approach for any hitter I guess but uh, Randy Wells with the first two pitches of the sequence inside off the plate and then went right back out to that outside corner. And there's no question Pujols has power to any part of the ballpark. But uh, seems to do a lot more of his damage from center field around to the left field foul pole. Runner goes. Ground ball. They avoid the double play. And Castro does get pools. Well, that's fortunate to get it out. Well, came up and uh, got a good piece of Starlin, but he was able to recover and get one out. Hit ball that just climbed right up Starlin Castro's left arm. Fortunately, he found the ball quickly, and that strong throwing arm allowed him to get two holes at first base. So Albert's 0 for 3. Starlin a little rattled out there. That one might have caught him up in the jaw or maybe the throat area. Yeah, you see him rubbing this side of his face right there. Event Castro from Chicago is today's hit the jackpot with Powerball contestant. If the Cubs hit a home run in the next inning, Event Castro will win 100 chances to win the Powerball jackpot, and Saturday's jackpot is worth $52 million. Holiday, then Wells, then Soto all wiping their brow. Sweaty afternoon here at Wrigley. Swing by Holiday. Well, you can see, even though he got the swing and a miss, Giovanni Soto immediately put his hand in his glove down. Get the breaking ball down. Look at the location of this flat slider. You're not going to get away with many of those. Gets away with that one. Let's see, get it down here. Come on. And Randy Wells. 
Jazz with a mistake. Not even sure why he was worried about John Jay in the first place as he threw it in the center. Randy does have a couple of pickoffs already this season, but uh, I'm not sure why he let that ball go. You do not have to throw to second base. Terrio didn't give any kind of indication or sign that he was going to break for the bag at second. Well, just freelancing a little bit out there now. It's his fifth error already. You just hope that he can forget about it and he doesn't get rattled by it. It's especially significant since there's only one out in the inning because now Holiday could conceivably drive home a run without a hit. Signed with the Cardinals to a seven year deal with a hundred twenty million dollars. Eight hits in that three game series here at Wrigley in May. Cardinals just extended John Mosalock, their general manager, who's done a nice job. And this contract now goes through 2013. Club leading the way in the NL Central for a while there was the Reds with the Cardinals chasing them, but the Cardinals winning eight in a row before it was snapped yesterday. There, top the division inside to make it two and two. Cubs are a half game back of Milwaukee for third. So, right now, only two of the six teams over 500 and really even close to the 500 mark. Three and two. Wells keeps surrounding home plate. Alfonso Marquez has uh, historically had a very small strike zone. We saw it earlier for Jeff Supon. Now Randy Wells trying to nibble on that outside corner. Looked to be just off the plate. Three two, and Holiday strikes out. Didn't even think about walking to first, or at least trying to get there with the ball getting away from Soto. That's seven for Wells. Not sure why Holiday didn't at least give it an effort down that first baseline with a runner at third. You're forcing Giovanni Soto to run over in front of the Cubs dugout, pick up that ball, and throw all the way down to first base. I just think he assumed that that ball was caught. Well, you know what happens when you assume? Yes. Chance to get out of it here with no damage at all. A strike on Rasmus. Jammed him. He pops it up into center. And Marlon Burr puts it away. They waste yet another leadoff single. Four nothing Cubs.
Log on to WGNTV.com right now. Click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner and connect to all the up to the minute stats and info while you're watching at home. Game Zone is sponsored by the Great Escape, pools, patio, and play sets, hot tubs, and more. The Hawk is a Hall of Famer. Andre Dawson will go into the Hall of Fame. He's in Cooperstown, New York. Induction ceremony on Sunday. We will honor him after the game on our post game coverage, the 10th inning. And the Cardinals represented as well. Whitey Herzog will be inducted. And the cards to the World Series title in 1982. Pennants in 82, 85, 87. Base hit Ryan Terrio. Colleague John Miller will get the Ford C. Frick Award for broadcasting excellence. I saw a quote one time that was attributed to Whitey Herzog, and it sounds like Whitey. Uh, he was asked what it takes to be a good manager at the major league level, and he said a good bullpen and a good sense of humor. And if you don't have one, you better have the other. Lead off man on. Wells already with a sack bunt. Supon will toss to Schumacher covering first. It's been a good day on the mound so far for Randy Wells, shutting down the Cardinals offense through six innings. Also a good day at the plate. Two perfectly executed sack punts and a base hit in his three at bats. Fire Doug Harvey. We'll go in on Sunday as well. Harvey, who was affectionately known by all the players during his umpiring career as God. He even looked like an, an actor that you might cast as God in a movie. The silver hair. He called me out on strikes one time in Yuma, Arizona in a spring training game. Came back behind the plate the next half inning to get the warm up pitches. I said, Doug, are you sure that was a strike? And he said, Bobby, one of the red seams caught the corner of the black. And well, if, if you can see that, you're a better man than I. One of the red seams caught the corner of the plate. Terrio at second, a 1 1 to Colvin. And able to hold up on the inside pitch, 2 and 1. Bill Madden, national baseball columnist for the New York Daily News since 88. We'll get the J.G. Taylor Spink Award. Take a quick look at our BMW drive of the game. It came early. First batter of the bottom of the first inning for the Cubs. Tyler Calden touching one up to right field. Only BMW offers ultimate service by a BMW now and pays zero maintenance costs for four years or 50,000 miles, whichever comes first. The 3 1 to Calden. Up in the air, left center, Matt Holliday. Ontario will hold it second. When you're a young player at the major league level, uh, Landon, you take your at bats as they come, but Tyler Colvin's getting to the point now where he has expectations for himself. He felt he had a good pitch to hit right there. In just got under it a little bit, lifted that high fly ball to left field. I like to see that. He wants to do better. He has expectations on what he should do to help this team win. Starlin is one for three. Infield hit, a hustle hit in the first. He's hit the ball on the ground 
all three times. Not this time, he pops it up. Near home plate, Supon looking around, and it's going to drop! 5 nothing. Supon looking around, LaRue looking around. I don't know if Lopez ever saw it. The luckiest hit Starlin Castro will ever have. But he'll take it. He'll get an RBI out of it. And a ball that went about 12 feet. Well, that was trouble right off the bat. Felipe Lopez never moved from his third base position. You can see LaRue's all turned around already looking for help. Supon was the closest Cardinal defender to the baseball. And normally you don't want the pitcher to handle it at all. Foot RBI single lined and picked clean by Tyler Green. He has not had a fun day over the visitors' dugout after that pop up dropped, taking it out of the, the phone. Did not score yesterday in 11 innings. They have not scored in six today. The Cubs have kept Pujols and Holiday in check. And three homers for the Cubs. Colvin, Soto, Soriano. Visit your Honda dealer. Test drive a 2010 Honda CRV. Schumacher, LaRue, and a pinch hitter for Supon. Fly ball left field. Soriano drifting and catching. to cover any banks will conduct the seventh inning stretch today make sure you come on out for the 2010 red dirt fest Andy wells ryan terry are putting together a charity concert coming up on wednesday august 4th and joe's bar two quick outs Hey fans, visit the official online shop of the Chicago Cubs at Cubs.com. Browse the largest selection of official gear, including the latest apparel, nostalgic memorabilia, and authentic classics for the whole family. Get your gear from the official source, the Cubs.com shop. Accept no substitutes. Switch hitting Randy Wynn will pinch hit. Signed as a free agent in June. After being released by the Yankees. Go to joesbar.com or childrensmemorial.org for more information. Uh, Red Dirt Fest 2010, Wednesday, August 4th. 
be a fun night. Swing and a miss. One and two. These guys were once traded for one another. How about that? From Tampa Bay to Seattle, Randy Wynn is compensation for the Rays hiring away Lou after the 2002 season. His foot. It is not Brian Campbell, but it kind of looks like him. With the Blackhawks t shirt on. See, that's what you need a buddy in the row behind you to fan the back of your neck and maybe get somebody in the row in front of you to, to fan the front. That way you don't burn calories trying to stay cool. Well, our uh, auto zone tip of the day was to look out for others. Fan is, was doing that. Count three and two, Mr. Cub. Ready to sing. He's stretching out like he's going to take it at bat. Yeah. They're all stretched out. <laughs> Those rock stars, they get stretched out. Hundred pitches, four wells, which. Feels like a few more on a day like this. He has been really good. Rocketed foul. Day yesterday, good to give the bullpen a break after everybody was used on Wednesday. They need a relief pitcher before this at bat is over. 11 pitches to Randy Wynn trying to get him out here with two outs in the seven. And he cannot get the pinch hitter. That's the second walk for Wells. The aforementioned PJ Walters just up from the minors, getting ready for the bottom of the seventh. Cubs pitching coach Larry Rothschild sitting next to that phone. He's going to make a call. Swing and a miss. Bob, what does Lester Strode say? Tom's bullpen may I help you. What does he say when he answers the phone? Well, it depends Why? on the game situation, but usually you don't say anything. You, you just make the connection and let Larry or Lou, whoever's on the other end, say what they want done down in that bullpen and then try to get guys going as quickly as possible. Larry, how are you? Good, Lester. When it's going bad, you pick up the phone and say, I'm oh, sorry, we can't get to the phone right now. If you leave your name and number, we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. One and two. You know, that makes sense. I once called Lester and he didn't say anything. Now I know why. Talk about forming habits. <laughs> Marlon Bird We're behind the baseball, no matter what, on a fly ball. It's Lester Strode. If you call him, he'll just wait for you to talk. Who do you want up? A one, 
two to Green. Able to hold up. Two and two. Good sinker down and in. Green was able to check his swing that time. Goes on the 2 2. Soto's going to throw and late. Wynn gets in with a steal. A little bit of a risk. Down 5 0. Another really good jump by a Cardinal base runner and a tough pitch for Giovanni Soto to handle. Any catcher will tell you they would much prefer that ball to either be right in front of them or a little bit to the right side of their body. So they can get in a throwing position much quicker when it's on the left side of your body. It takes a little bit longer to get your shoulders closed and get into a good throwing position. Three two on the way. Ball four. Randy really wanted it screamed into his glove. Sometimes a pitcher will get upset because he feels the pitch was in the strike zone. Other times he'll get upset because he executed exactly the pitch he wanted to but didn't get the desired result. He was hoping to get Tyler Green to swing at that slider. The best result he could have had was a ground ball somewhere, but Green able to lay off. Wells upset. Probably the worst start. And what hopefully will be a very long major league career on May 28th, and this has been one of his better ones against the very same team. Now this could very well be his last hitter if he doesn't retire. Felipe Lopez. He struck out Lopez all three at bats so far today. I think that's probably the main reason he's been given the opportunity here to get the third out of the seventh inning. Back to back two out walks and ball one to Lopez. Well, that fifth run might loom large when it's all said and done. A pop up right in front of home plate that nobody caught. Cubs got an extra run. Up the middle, but Castro is shaded that way, and he's going to have to throw the first. Here comes Ernie. With the stretch. This conductor for taking me out to the ball game is Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks. The stretch.
swing. Look at that swing. Look at that swing. What is that? What is that? What is that? That's number 500. For Ernie Banks. What is that? I don't believe that. Mr. Cub. I don't believe that. Do you? I don't believe that. I just saw it. I don't believe it. It happened. How did that feel, Ernie? Oh, it was a wonderful feeling. A great thrill. Uh, and my friend Ron Santa won the game. That was the main thing. He got the hit to win the game against the Braves. Five nothing Cubs were in the seventh. And that's good. It is good. Wind howling straight out. Home run hitter. Ramos Ramirez at the plate and he pops it up. It was a good pitch. This was an issue for the Cardinals in the last inning and it'll be caught <laughs> by Green. A little tricky today, Ernie. Well, that's where it is here. You got to play the win. That's where it is. But anyway, my giving back cruise is coming on the 31st of July. A tour of the downtown area where you can see all the wonderful skylines of the city. It's going to be on July 31st. And uh, you can get it. Ernie Banks, ErnieBanks.net. You can get your tickets. And, uh, yeah, the uh, summer cruise giving back on the Odyssey ship. And it will launch from Navy Pier. Three-hour evening. Elegant dinner cruise. Cocktails, dancing. You're going to do a lot of dancing. Yeah, I'm going to do a lot of dancing. <laughs> Live entertainment and fireworks. Proceeds will benefit three of your favorite charities, the McCormick Foundation, Rainbows for All Children, and the Chicago Child Care Society. And I've always believed in children. Playing here at Wrigley Field, I mean, you always get a lot of kids. The school's out, so you get a chance to meet them and grow up with them and see them. And I've seen a lot of them since my days were over and uh, they all are doing great so it's a wonderful thing to give back and the Cubs also have Cubs fantasy camp at Wrigley Field coming up August 8th and 9th and you will be a part of that as well looking forward to it here in a couple of weeks yeah look at me me Billy Randy Hundley and like Sutcliffe, uh, I think, is going to be here Sutcliffe we'll have a great time those are always fun things you do I mean they're really nice you get a chance to see a lot of kids, help them, and talk to them, and, and learn from them as well. Well, we're going to be on the road, Ernie, but otherwise I know you, you're trying to get Bob to catch batting practice, <laughs> and I know he would have loved to catch during fantasy camp, especially with his new knee. Yeah. Oh, he's got two new, new knees. He's got a new knee. Matt Holiday on the run makes a catch. So the Ernie Banks giving back summer cruise on July 31st. You're going to get your tickets, Ernie, at ErnieBanks.net. And do it fast. That's coming up in eight days. And this is the kind of day you'd love to be out in the lake. That's it? right. Uh -huh. And it's a wonderful skyline. You've seen it. I mean, it's a great. Chicago has a great skyline. And it's wonderful. So we'll have a wonderful time, uh, meet a lot of people, and do some good for, for others, the children. Well, two outs in the inning. Hopefully it'll extend here, but I want to ask you about Andre Dawson and what he can expect this weekend in Cooperstown. Well, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful thing for him. I know he's pretty excited about it. I'm very happy to be there with him and see it and, and chat with him. Don't bring a cup cap. Put it on his head <laughs> and get a picture of it. How about that? I like that idea. And you know what he did here? He came here without a contract. And won the MVP award. He had an amazing year, 1987. You're absolutely right. Have fun at Cooperstown. I'm sure Billy will be there, and Rhino, and uh, Andre Dawson. Ernie Thank you thanks. very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
Bud Light Concert Series. Jack Johnson is playing the Alpine Music Valley tomorrow. Get your tickets at LiveNation.com. The Summer Concert Series is brought to you by Bud Light. Live music and Bud Light. Here we go. Left-hander Sean Marshall will get the eighth. Not only will try to preserve the win, that's the most important thing, but a five-hit shutout at the moment for Randy Wells. Going to keep the Cardinals off the board. Once again, ErnieBanks.net. There's a great cruise for some great causes coming up on July 31st. Off the uh, inside corner, 2-0 and the count on John Jay. Three and zero. Ball four. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Cycles of baseball. The Cardinals rattled off eight in a row. They were the hottest team around. Then they got shut out in 11 innings yesterday to come here. On a hot day with a wind blowing straight out. Randy Wells handcuffs them through seven. And they trail five nothing. Everybody cools off. Just a matter of when. Maybe the Cubs have caught the Cardinals at the right time. Well, you certainly hope so because realistically if the Cubs have any hope whatsoever of getting back in this Central Division race they need to win every one of these head to head games. Fly ball deep to right. Coleman's going to have room and Albert Pujols is 0 for 4. For three, a single and two strikeouts. Marshall has given up a run in his last eight appearances and 15 of his last 16 and has just been dominating at times. Already his 51st appearance, his career high last year, 55. He should shatter that mark here very soon. One and two to Holiday. Good Marshall has been especially lately and especially against left handed batters which is why it was so shocking to see him walk John Jay to start this inning. He had only walked three left handed hitters all season long. Ground ball foul. First, one out, we're in the eighth. Too high, two and two. Terrio to Castro to Lee. Double play, inning over, goes 4 6 3. And we'll head to the bottom of the eighth. Cubs 5, Cardinals 
Zippo. few of the things that are going on right now on the North American Cup. That this baseball game is being seen in Europe right now over the Telstar satellite. Let's give all the baseball fans in Europe a big hello from Chicago. At this point, the Phillies, no runs, one hit, no errors. The Cubs, no runs, two hits, no errors. Well, we realize that all of this that was on this date in 1962, July 23rd. The Telstar satellite debuted, making it possible for Europe to see America via TV for the first time. And the first image they received, Cubs baseball from Wrigley Field. And we are on the Armed Forces Network around the world, thanks to all of our men and women serving at home and abroad. Yes, indeed. We salute you. One and two on Soto. Five nothing Cubs in the eighth. Feeling Alfonso Marquez is going to sleep well tonight. Ooh. As this game has progressed, uh, yeah, they've come out. The umpire's room attendant putting cold towels over his head, making sure he's staying hydrated back there behind the dish. Farinella does a great job in the umpire's room as Pujols, and the Gold Glove winner with a nice pick to save Tyler Green from an error. We got a reaction from the fans on that first base side. It looked like Pujols came off the bag early. We'll get a better look at it on the replay. The throw was in the dirt a little bit toward the home plate side. The smallest of margins. He kept the toe of the right foot on the bag just long enough. It always looks like the first baseman comes off early on close plays anyway. And some of them do. shot to second. Schumacher will pick it up and get Terrio. For our Chicagoland viewers, the WGN News at 5 coming up. In less than an hour and a half, Mark Sapelsa, Lourdes Duarte, Tom Skilling with the weather forecast. Mars is going to get a chance to take in at bat here with the first two scheduled hitters up. In the ninth for the Cardinals, both left-handed. Lou's going to leave Marshall in the ball game. Sean has had three at bats this season, still looking for that first knock. All three ABs ended up in a strikeout. Foul out of 
that play. Blake Hawksworth, a righty against left-hander Tom Gorzolani, who's been excellent since jumping back into the rotation. Tomorrow afternoon, then the Sunday night game, Chris Carpenter and Ryan Dempster. Remember, the Cubs beat Roy Halladay in Sunday night baseball last week. Maybe they can do it again against Chris Carpenter as Marshall strikes out. We'll head to the ninth. All Cubs in game one. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN, your official summer baseball station. Cubs three outs away from nodding up this season series of two apiece. After today, still 11 more meetings between Cubs and Cards. Well, let's see, the Cubs came in 11 out. I guess if they could win all 12. Have to be a little bit better against everybody else and the Cardinals and they'll win it. A little easier said than done. Take it one game at a time. That's right. One and two to Rasmus. Good job by Sean to get through the eighth. As he got both Pujols and Holiday. And hopefully the Cubs won't have to see those guys until tomorrow. Swing and a miss, strike three. Steady diet of breaking pitches from Sean Marshall to the left handed hitting Rasmus. The last one, a hard slider. Started at the knees in the middle of the plate, ended up on the outside corner below the knees for strike three. Schumacher one for three. Fastball in there for a strike at 93. Terrio shuffling over to his right. And Schumacher by two full steps. Bring up Jason LaRue. A 
Let's send a special happy birthday wish to Robert Zeman from Gurney, 90 years old today, served with General Patton in World War II after graduating from Lane Tech. And Phil Cavaretta. A great Phil Cavaretta. in danger of being shut out back-to-back -back games. That would be 20 straight innings without a run. Switch hitting Aaron Miles. And Carlos Marble is going to get ready just in case. That shank foul off to the right behind the Cardinal dugout. Looks like Carlos is really going to start cranking it up in earnest until uh, he sees what happens here with the Aaron Miles at bat. Almost hit him. One and one. The Cubs have pitched today. Conditions like this. He's sitting here, 26 outs in, only five hits and no runs allowed. The wind has not let up all day. Going straight out. Strike three, Cubs win. They combine on a five hit shutout. Randy Wells and Sean Marshall, Tyler Colvin, ended up with the game winning hit as he led off the bottom of the first with a home run. That was a nice ball game today.